You know, un- until you, I-, I remember the story there in the Bible of um, those who love much. Remember the one who loved much? Who was the one who loved much? The one who was forgiven of much. You know, you really can't appreciate a gift and, until you need the gift. You know, how many of you get a $100 bill for, for Christmas or for your birthday? And, you know, if you didn't get it, listen, if you didn't get it, you'd still be okay. And so you get it, and it's, there's an appreciation behind it. How many of you know if you're in a place where you don't have a dollar and someone gives you $100, how many of you, it's a different gift, isn't it? Isn't it a different gift? When you have the need and you realize, oh, my, right on time, that's what I had to have. Listen, that's the center when the Holy when they were, the revelation comes to them. I'm lost. I am undone. I am so lost. I am heading for a devil's hell. My life is a wreck. And the Holy Spirit came and drawed me to him and brought me, and he forgave me. I'm going to tell you, when you know you have the need, the salvation means so much more. Amen. How many of you know you cannot be saved unless you know you're lost, you're heading the wrong direction? How, what are you saved from? I listened to, a, 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 um, I listened to a, a, a video this week. I was listening to some worship, some Brownsville worship, and um, I was listening to some Brownsville worship, and then a video started playing after that, and it was, it was a, a couple of ministers uh, ministering about and I didn't agree with them all. I mean, I, they're, they're good guys, but I didn't agree with them. They were talking about how people just pray these simple prayers. You know, come down front and, and repeat this prayer, and, uh, you know, then you're saved. God, God bless you, you're saved. Now, I, I, I'm one to believe that, that there's something with that because it does take the heart, first of all, to come into the house of the Lord, and secondly, to make a step towards God, and then to pray it. So I don't, I don't discourage any of that, right? But there is a sanctification after. There is a walk after that. You know, after we're justified by faith, there is a walk now into that sanctification, being set apart, dying to self and taking upon the work of Christ. Amen. And that and that's good. But tonight I want I want to touch base on a little bit of this that 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 I'd mentioned. But I want you to turn to the book of Romans, chapter eight, if you would. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? He is good. He is great. He has done great things. Clyde, he's done great things. He's a good God. Hallelujah. I love that man. He's got such a sweet spirit, Clyde. Woo-wee. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8. Um, I, I just want to throw this out tonight. It's, it, there's some stuff that's been on my heart for, for a while. Of um, Really, I don't know. I don't want to go shotgun style tonight. I want to I want to try, to try to come in. and We're going to read a couple of scriptures that will help me do that. Marcus, I want you to come up here and sit down, bud. As soon as you get your stuff together. Thank you. Hallelujah. I love Marcos. I love Natalie, too. I love all my kids. When I used to, when I used to uh, have to correct my wife's English, um, still do, but not as much, but when she was really, really raw in English, <laughs> I, uh, we, we started something where when I had to correct her, I had to kiss her. And so that helped. I mean, it was like, you know, it was a true story. So then I began to realize she was messing up on purpose. Some of y'all saying, gross. My wife and I was dancing today over lunch. Marcos was playing a song. What was the name of that song? What was the name of that song? No, you was playing To the Moon to New York or something. Wasn't that, what, how's that verse go, the chorus go? He's playing that old. Anyway, he don't remember it. Anyway, it's an old, an old, you know, mom and dad song, you know, 60s, 70s, old love song. And so my wife and I started dancing, and my kids just like grossed out. They're like, ah, come on. Hey, man, you need to enjoy, enjoy life. Hey, man, there's nothing wrong with dancing in the middle of the day. Hallelujah. It's good stuff. Romans 8. We're going to start at verse 14. Um, I don't uh, have any idea what to name this message, but I appreciate Jason. Thank you so much. Jason Taylor has been 
uploading all of our sermons on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, so if you want to go there and subscribe, you can see that. Um, I had a uh, sp- called a pastor today whose uh, mother is passing away. His mother's not doing good. They've just given her three days to live, two days now. And um, uh, I called him just to, just to encourage him. I've never met the man. I've just heard about him. He's a local, kind of local. He lives over in Kentucky. But um, just praying for him. He, his church is in Perry County, and he was supposed to come to the leaders' gathering, but didn't, didn't get to make it. And so I heard about his mom. So I just called and reached out and loved on him. And he, and he said to me, and Jason, listen to this. He said to me, he said, hey, I was listening to one of your messages the other day. I listened to this message on YouTube. And he said, man, it just messed me up in a good way. It was, it was just a really encouraging message. And, uh, and so uh, it wasn't me. It was David Ravenhill preaching. So hallelujah to God be the glory. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I appreciate you doing that, lifting, you know, putting those up there because it's, it, you know, it's good to broadcast the truth. Amen. It's good to do that. But Jason, I know, spends time doing that. And um, Romans 8, and let's go start at verse 14. I want to read just a few verses here. Romans 8, 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Unless I just want just real quick to pray. I want to, I want to read this verse in 16, and I want all of us to pray together again. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Let's pray. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, we all just lift up our hearts to you. We ask you to reveal yourself to us. Lord, this is not just a Wednesday night. This is a meeting with the God of the universe. Lord, this is an encounter with the Holy Spirit of God that you've brought. You you, you, you came, Lord, down to the earth as a man died on the cross, resurrected, went back to heaven, Lord, and left your your spirit here with us. Lord, the potential and the capabilities, Lord, that we have to, to just be one with you, God. Your spirit living, abiding in us, working in us, God. And Lord, I'm so thankful that we have that opportunity, God, because we know we could not do it alone. And we thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I want you to look back at, at, at uh, chapter 7. Just flip the page back there, if you would. Romans chapter 7. And I, I want to I I just read something about the law here. And, and Paul mentioned it. Matter of fact, Big Mike had mentioned, read, I think, um, he didn't read these scriptures. But he read some scriptures out of Romans 7, which is very similar to what we're getting ready to read. On Sunday night, uh, Big Mike read that. Romans 7, 7. Are you ready? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Talking about the Old Testament, okay? Not talking about governmental laws. We're talking about the law, the Old Testament, the Torah, you know, that was given, the law was given to Moses. You shouldn't steal, you shouldn't kill. Obviously, the Ten Commandments, but there's all, all the other 600 laws that they had, right? Okay? Is the law sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law. For I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity through the commandment, produced in me coveting of every kind. For apart from the law, sin is dead. Well, there's no law, there's no sin, right? How many of you ever had a kid that broke, broke one of your rules, but you didn't tell them the rules? <laughs> yeah. All right, then you then you had to get him in line and say, hey, well, look, here, here, okay, listen, you're not supposed to go over there. You're not supposed to do this. Okay, you understand that? Okay. So then then they come and they do it. They break that law. Then what do you got to do? You, you have a different, you have a different way you can handle it, don't you? You see that? See what he's saying here? 
Verse 8, but sin taking opportunity through the commandment produced in me coveting of every kind. For apart from the law, sin is dead. Look at verse 9. And I, talking about Paul, he's talking about himself. And I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin became alive and I died. And this commandment, which was to result in life, proved to result in death for me. Now, I, uh, I don't know a very good way to, to, to give a great example other than uh, the law. Let's say there's some, the laws in the United States. How many of you can say that we have a few too many laws in the United States? Does anybody have any idea how many laws are out on the books? Anybody want to take a stab at it? I don't know, so I, I, I'm, there's no wrong answer. I don't know the answer. I'm just asking. Now, now, now think about this. Think about all the written laws. Let's just say governmental laws. Okay, so let's not. So we know that there's some laws, like at South Spencer High School. There's probably some rules, right, that, that are set in, in in order on their. What, what's the stuff called? Help me out there, uh, uh, David Finley. I know you took care of this. I know you're busy parenting. <laughs> you're laying the law down. <laughs> David's trying to lay the law down, so I, I can't ask. But but the government, uh, uh, companies have their rules, right? What are they called, Ben? You guys, bylaws, handbooks, right? Handbook, that's the one I was looking for. So everybody has a handbook. How many of you are signed a handbook that, yeah, I read it, and I want to abide by all your stuff, right? How many of you truly read all that stuff? <laughs> Every word of it. Now, David, you wrote it, so you got <laughs> Not all that stuff, but just to just say just government laws. Is there any idea? I mean, do you know there's still laws on the books for like horses and how to horses and, and chariots and all that, you know, horses and, and wagons and stuff like on roads. There's still laws on the books that, that absolutely don't pertain to us because it's not even used hardly anymore. Obviously in the Amish community there may be. But there's, there's all kinds of laws that used to be pertinent to the situation that are now not even, they're not even... You know what I'm saying? Now, what tonight I want to do is this. I want to draw, I want us to really focus on this. The law and what is written versus the spirit. Now, here's how we can get there real fast. Sermon on the Mount, right? Sermon on the Mount, right? How many of you can say, you know, I'm not living in an adulterous situation. I'm not living in adultery. You know, the law says, yeah, I shall not commit adultery, right? You know, Stay with another person's wife or husband, right? You shall not do that. How many of you can say, praise God, I'm not there. I'm not doing it. What did Jesus come and say? The law says this, but I say to you, and let me give you the spirit of it. Let me give you the heart of God. What God, what what he's really trying to, what he's trying to get to us is this. What does he say? If you look at a woman to lust after him, You've already committed adultery in your heart. And all of us say, I have sinned. <laughs> Some of you ladies have to look up here at me. I know it's, it's hard. Isn't it, BJ? <laughs> just kidding. I just thought I'd bring it out. I just had to say it. Keith, thank you for laughing. Ben's not laughing at all. Well, come on, Ben. That was funny right there. I don't care who you are. That's funny. That's <laughs> right. It's the <laughs> it's those apostolic elbows, yeah. My my dad went to a church one time. He was the only guy that had short sleeve, and the pastor preached about short sleeves. How bad, how wrong it was. That was the last time they went to that church. Uh, there's some there's some stuff out there, folks. There's some laws. There's some laws out there and some rules that are man made. But Jesus said this. Let me give you the spirit of it. Let me give you the spirit of the law. Now listen, folks, I also, before I hit on this, let me, let me go ahead and say this. I'll give you some good words. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, okay? Please don't let your own heart smite you to death and say, well, you know what? I looked at someone today, and you just beat yourself up. No, what he's saying is condemn that sin in the flesh, Okay? When your mind starts to go, when your eyes start to wander, right right when the Holy Spirit starts to hit you and you start knocking, deal with it right then. Holy Spirit, Lord, God help me. Help me, Lord. Don't let me dwell on that. Don't let me go live in that place. 
where I'm sitting there and just processes and processes and thinking about it. That, and Jesus said there's a spirit of it. There's a spirit behind just the written word, right? And that's what he's talking about. All right, let's look at this. So Paul's conscience was not troubling him at one time, right? He was like the a rich young ruler, wasn't he, who said of the commandments, all these have I kept from my youth up. I want you to turn there. Turn to Matthew 19. This is in several places. I think it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew 19. Let's look at this. Okay? And here's what we're going to say. Paul was at a spot. Listen to me. You know this is true. When Paul was killing Christians, you know what he was saying? I am blameless according to the law. I am living the law perfectly. And at the same exact time he was saying that and doing it, he was killing, murdering Christians. But he was saying... But I'm doing it as unto the law. Okay? Was he not? Blameless. He says it, in, I think it's Philippians 3. He said, you know, the law, I was, I was blameless. I was, I mean, I, I was, I mean, he, he, this, listen, guys, Paul was studying under, at that time, I mean, I, I the only way I can really describe this, where anybody would get this at this time, is, is if you're Catholic, and you're studying underneath the Pope's right-hand man. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. That's who Paul was studying. He was studying under the, the highest ranking and smartest uh, men at that time. That was Paul was right there with them. Okay, this guy was blameless according to the law. I mean, he had it all down right. How many of you know some people who do it right and you can't stand them? Because a lot of times, some of those type of that type of spirit behind that person, they want to let you know that they are right, and, and 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 the whole time it's condescending to make you look like you're not. Right? There's a spirit behind. Sometimes people are doing it just right, but there's a spirit behind them that's telling them. You know what I'm saying? This this is the, this is what we're talking about tonight: the law versus the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is trying to pull us to Him and saying, "Hey." Do it, do it this way. Do it with the right spirit within you, the Holy Spirit coming through you, not just in your good works, not in your flesh. So look, let's look at the rich young ruler. This is a great, this is, to me, this is, this is good stuff right here. Matthew 19, 16. Are you ready? Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came unto him and said unto him, Good master, Jesus, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, first of all, wrong question. Wrong spirit, you missed it, didn't he? I mean, right off the question is he realizes you are following the law, meaning I'm doing everything right. What shall you say? What what shall I do? Well, son, listen, we've been here for 4,000 years. There's been millions of people walk this earth. Can you imagine what Jesus is thinking? There's been millions and millions of people a lot better than you who they tried to do their best to live right, and they did it. How many of you can say David? How many of you can say David? Say David. Who was the only person that God said, he's after my own heart, a man after my heart, my own heart? David. Everybody say David. David was a murderer. David was a adulteress. We could go right on. David disrespected the king. He cut his robe off, and his heart smote him and said, Oh, my, I humiliated the king. That is against the law. See, when you're trying in your own strength, you cannot do it. You can't do it. You can't get there. You can do all your heart. How many of you ever tried to quit something? I have it. An addiction. You tried and you tried and you did and you, uh-uh. Until he came, until something else came that was, that was better than just a written r- rule. All right, let's keep going here. What much I do to obtain eternal life. Verse 17, and Jesus said unto him, why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not commit a murder. 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Here's where we're going tonight. And a young man said unto him, I have been doing all of that, but I'm still not fulfilled. Something still ain't right. I'm doing everything right, but I've been doing everything I can in this marriage and something still ain't. I've been doing it right in this job. I work my job. I work harder than everybody else there, but I can't stand. I, I know I shouldn't be there. Stay there because God ain't done with you. He's trying to get you. He's trying to get you somewhere. There's a spirit behind it. The Holy Spirit's trying to get us to a place. Amen. Why am I still lacking? He said. Jesus said unto him, If you wish to be complete, go. Sell all your possessions and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieved, for he was one who owned much property. The difference between following the law and the rules versus the spirit is this. If you read the the law, if you see the law, you study, I, listen, y'all know I use the law a lot. I use the Old Testament, the First Testament a lot. I don't call it first, I call it, or old, I call it first. Because if you, the pattern, the pattern, every, well, here's the, the key of the whole First Testament. The pattern in the First Testament is, does two things. Number one, it leads us to Jesus. It leads us that there's only one who can do it, okay? And, and listen, the second thing that I think, the major thing that it does is this. It always puts him first. Always puts him first. It's never about us. It's always about him. Think about that. Listen, I preached about the tithe and the offering recently and the first fruits. Remember that? One thing I've learned about all that is this. It's not about a word. It's not about a tenth. It's about him getting the first place from my heart. Isn't it? Do you think it's really about 10%? Do you think it's really about, well, I've got to give, you know, i got $333.33. I have got to give $33.33. Or, I, you know, if I give $33.31, I mean, I, he, may, he may strike me down. Friend, that's living in the law. That's living in, in just in, in trying to do it, do it the works way. Do it out of the spirit way. What is, he, what is he really after? He's not after a tithe. He's not after the tenth. He's after you. He's after our hearts. He's after our spirit, man, to where it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Sandy sent us a, a, a thing today, or David, one of you guys sent it to it, and I watched that. Of course, I love David um, Char, uh, Prince, Derek Prince. I love watching Derek Prince. And, and basically, he just says, if you're a soldier and you know you're a soldier for Christ in the kingdom of Christ, do you know that soldiers die? When they go in, there's a great chance, hey, I'm fighting for whatever I'm fighting for, for a country or for a cause, and whatever that is, I have a a chance to die. But you know the best ones who are those who say, yep, I am, but I'm going anyway. The cause is worth it, I'm going. Those who truly have the the, the attitude is, if it costs my life, it costs my life. They, They go in with everything. Think about doing that for Jesus. If we go in saying, you know what, everything is yours. I don't have anything. The, 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 the 100% that I've got from my job or from my increase or whatever, it's all yours anyway, so it's easy to give the top. It's easy to give the first. If we go in there with that spirit, friend, we, we, don't, we don't have any need. It's not, about, it's not about counting pennies anymore, is it? It's not about reading this book and saying, you know, I've got to get it right. I've got to get this right. You know, if I don't do this right, you know, he's going he's gonna to slay me. I had someone tell me recently, you know, I, I've got to give this or, or else. And I said, whoa, 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 or else what? I said, be careful, man. Don't, 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 don't throw no curse upon yourself. Well, I said, I'm going to do this, and I've got to do this, or else I may, I may lose everything. I said, huh, that ain't my God. My God is merciful. My God is merciful. But, you know, if you, it, listen, if you, if you say something you shouldn't have said, if you commit to something or maybe commit to something to someone that, that you said you was going to do and you haven't done it yet, 
Just apologize. Just repent and say, I, I messed up. How many of you husbands have committed some gift to someone, and then your wife said, uh, honey, uh, we don't have that. You, 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 you gave it. Or vice versa. The wife says, oh, yeah, we'll do it. We'll buy it. Honey, husband's like, we don't have it. It's not there. It's not there. So you have to go humble yourself and repent. It, it's, not, it's not that you just let it die. The Bible says if, if, you, if, you, if you make an oath with your mouth, either fulfill it or go repent. Deliver yourself, right? Deliver yourself from a word that's been spoken. I love the, I love the word. There's a way out of it, isn't there? There's always a way out. We have to humble ourselves, though. So the flesh versus the spirit. We're talking about the flesh versus the spirit here. So think about this rich young ruler with me just for a second. What, what was he? What was his biggest problem? I'm going to say arrogance. He didn't have any need, did he? I, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything right. How many of you know that he didn't get, he didn't get the pattern? God is after you. God is after everything. He didn't get that pattern. You know what? The first, the, the first covenant, the, the, the Old Testament, do you know that was the pattern then? God just wanted everything. It was all his. I put you in that land. I put you in that promised land. It wasn't you. I delivered you with a mighty hand out of Egypt, and I brought you into this land. I gave you this land. You didn't do it. I did it. Give me the glory. Give me first place. Follow these, these commandments, and you will live but if you don't, you won't. Do you know from the beginning, it's always been about him. It's always been about giving him first place in everything. It's, it's always been like that. Look, why did, they go into, why, did, why did Israel go into bondage? Why did, why did Assyria come and take him over? Disobedience. He had to whip him, didn't he? And so you got this rich young ruler that's saying, we're not all that bad. You know, there are many, many people in America are saying, you know, America, we're, we're not that bad. We're, I mean, compared to most people in the world, America is just, we're righteous. We send more missionaries than anybody. We send more money than anybody, don't we? But we also know better about murdering babies. We also know better about filling a blank, all kinds of other sins. We do, to whom much is given, much is required. And uh, America is in trouble because we, we, we've been blessed there's not a freer country on the earth. I mean, freedom to, to listen to any kind of sermon, up, down, left, right. I mean, everything you can imagine, every kind of sermon. We, we, we've got the, the, the capabilities to listen to, to the truth of the gospel. I don't want to keep beating on this. Philippians 3.1, Paul said this. Well, I'll tell you what, let's turn there and look at it. We'll, we'll end it on this one here. We'll end it in Philippians chapter 3. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Philippians. That is a leap. Philippians. Filipinos. How many of you know he was preaching to Filipinos here? Philippians chapter 3, this is a fantastic chapter. Let's look at verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me. And it is a safeguard for you. Look at verse 2. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of... Of the false circumcision. Verse 3. For we are the true circumcision who worship in the spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put, put no confidence in the flesh. Be real careful how we say, you know, I'm not too bad or, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. You know, I, I've, I used to be this, and I thank God I used to be a lot of things. How many of you can appreciate I used to? I thank God where he's brought me from. I thank, I thank God what I'm learning. But I'm going to tell you, while we're in the flesh, we have the capabilities to go back. Uh, Romans chapter 7, the flesh is strong, isn't it? So many times I'm ready to do, I want to do the right things. I want to fast for seven days. I mean, Jesus did 40 
a lot of men about what did 40. I just want to do 40 minutes. How many of you have started something really good spiritual and you didn't make it very far? A lot of, yeah, you went there to apologize to somebody and it, did, it didn't, didn't happen. You, you know, you turned out and left. Well, they weren't there. <laughs> I got to go. Oh, I got to go. They, oh, they'll be right back. Oh, I got to go. They weren't here. I must be a sign from the Lord. I can't I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. You know, we cannot put any confidence in the flesh, can we? None. None. Zero. We worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Listen to Paul saying, hey, if you want to talk about where you grew up and how I grew up and what I've learned and what you've learned, let's put it to test here. Look at verse 5. I was circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee. Listen, I grew up in church, man. My mom and dad, they they taught me. I I slept on the pew as a baby. I did this. I spoke in tongues. I got baptized. I've heard all the great preachers. I can can say the same thing. I I, I have been. I've been blessed. I've grown up a, a believer. I don't know when I got saved. You say, well, you got to know when you got saved. No, we repented every week. You did. I mean, you felt convicted every week, and I, I don't, I can't tell you. I didn't have not. I didn't have a day. I can't say well, October 29th of you know, nineteen and eighty five. You know, I gave my no. I don't have that. I, I, I still today keep repenting and saying, God help me, Lord. I still need you, Jesus. Right. You put no. But Paul's saying to them, he's saying, look, if you want to say that you know I've got this, or I'm the rich young ruler, you know I've, I've done all this. I've done it right. Paul's saying, look. I have two, I mean, even farther than you, but there's still in me something. Look at this. As to zeal, I persecuted the church. As to righteousness, which is in the law, I was found blameless. I followed everything right in the law. Did you hear what Paul just said? He was murdering believers of the Messiah, the true Messiah, and still was walking blameless. I don't know how much more of an of a, of a example we need that the, the law kills. The law can kill. If, listen, if the law is our focus. If the law is our focus, it's about us doing good. I'm doing it right. Why is it not working for me? I've had people come to my office and, and, and ask me all the time, you know, I know the Lord wants me out of this job. I hate this job. I hate my boss. I hate this. I hate that. I know he wants me to leave. And I'm just smiling thinking, he ain't done with you yet. He needs you to stay right where you are because what he's trying to do is get your spirit in tune with him. Amen. There's a spirit behind The Holy Spirit's trying to bring us somewhere. It's not about, but Jason, I do it right. I work harder than anybody else. I always come in over time. Yeah, but you got a, something in your crawl that, that makes everybody around you not like you. That's a problem. You may be doing all the stuff that they say. You may be doing all right, man. You've got it all down. But there's something spirits coming off of you that everybody knows. He was blameless. Look at verse 7. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And I count them but rubbish or dung in order that I may gain Christ, that I may be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own derived from a law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained it, Or have already become perfect, but I press on in order that I may lay hold of it, for which that which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself 
as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, how many of you love this part? Forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, if you're at a spot where there's just some shaking going on in your life, some stirring, some, I don't know, I have no idea what my life is going on. I have no idea. Everything's tossed up. Everything's turned. Everything. Hey, listen, you could be in a place where, you know, everything is just smooth sailing. God's going to, he wants to shake us up. He wants us to have that spot where we're always growing in him. We're always looking to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the first and he's the, we've not attained, have we? None of us have attained, have we? You know, I think the Lord wants to draw us to a, to a, just that, you know, every day we wake up and say, Lord, here we are. It's another day. I have no idea what you got planned, but here I am. Yeah, I'm going to go to that factory, and I'm going to go stand on that same spot. I'm going to go put those same 4,313 widgets in that same 4,313 locations that I did yesterday. But today is different because I have a God who's going to do something different. Amen? When we can look at things and say, well, it's, this week's going to be, next week's going to be the same, next week's going to be the same, next month's going to be the same, I'm just heading to retirement. I'm, no, that ain't our God. That's law. That's living in law. That's living in the flesh. Amen? When you live in the Spirit, every day is crazy good. And you never know what God's going to do. You never know what, what can happen. And I love that. I don't know about you, but God loves to work when things are not predictable. He loves it. He loves it. He thrives on that. If you look at something, you think, I just can't figure that out. It's God normally. That looks too scary. That may not, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's probably him. It makes me feel, I don't know, my insides, I'm just feeling anxious. I'm feeling worried. I'm feeling, it's God. Move on. Keep going. He wants to bring us out of ourselves and move in his spirit. He wants zero confidence in the flesh. Zero, not a none, zero. You don't be careful when you just say, "Well, you know what? I'm listen. I'm preaching to us." How many of you have been saved for more than two years? Raise your hand. If you've been saved. Everybody, hold your hand up real high. If you've been saved more than two years, I'm talking to you. Because you can get to a spot where you just kind of just grooving in the grace. Problem is, you hit a groove. Actually, that groove sometimes becomes a a ditch. You know what a ditch is? It's a grave with both ends knocked out of it, and you can die there. Come on, let's chug up. What does he want to do tomorrow? Don't, don't just operate in, 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 especially in greasy grace. I thank God for grace, but be careful that we're just kind of operating. We're just kind of moving, just kind of hanging out, man. The Holy Spirit, is his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. How many of you want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit every day? I want to see him every day. Then it's going to take you to come up out of it sometimes and say, Lord, what is it today? What is it today? You know, I, I, my wife is beating on me for some things. I, I want to go here. I want to see this. I want, I'm want. i like, pull back, man. we got animals to feed. Chill out. But I know she's right. See, I know, but I just want, I like coming to my office, come here and pray, go over my lamp, turn on the morning, just sit here and just read. I like that. I just like to do the same thing sometimes. How many of you? I mean, like that. I, I just like the group. <laughs> Tina's a, that's him. I, I like it. I, I, I mean, there's a part of me that likes the cookie cutter predictable. I like it. It's safe. It's secure. But, you know, I also like to see him move. I like to see things happen. And it's always outside of my bounds of, of what I kind of like, you know. But, see, the Lord is trying to do the spirit of it. He's trying to get us in the spirit of trusting him. Amen. I don't know what that looks like for you, but I think you do. I think the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, saying, "You know what? I don't know. You know, I I, I had the the toughest decision ever. One of the toughest decisions I ever made in my life was uh, leaving. We had to leave our church. I was there 27 years. Pastor was one of my dearest friends, still is today. Great man of God, right up here on the hill. Pastor Walter's a great man. 
It was terrible. My wife will tell you. For two years, for two years, my wife looked at me and said, just leave. It's time to go. It's time to move on. You, you just can't do it. No, I'm not my paper. You know, I can't, you know, 27 years is a long time, especially when God was in it. I'm going to tell you, it, it's a hard, that's a hard thing to do when, when God's stirring and he's pulling and he's, you know, and, it, and it's against everything I think, I thought. I mean, we, we, we had to go borrow money to buy something we didn't want, didn't we, Billy? Crazy. I mean, I thought I had God figured out. You can't borrow, you can't borrow money, you can't do, which, you know, I still don't believe in borrow money. I don't like, I don't like borrow money. I don't think it's right. I think it'd be, but, you know, we didn't, we didn't borrow more than what it was worth, nothing like that. But, uh, you know, God does some weird things. And sometimes he makes us feel really weird. But I'm going to tell you, the spirit of us, he's trying to bring us to a spot. He's trying to stretch us to bring us to a spot where he can be first place in everything. First place in everything. Sometimes we can trust in our own riches, you know, and he'll make us give it away. At least he made me do that. Let's all stand. Are you on Facebook? I forgot all about that, but yeah. Facebookers, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We pray you're blessed tonight. Be ready because the Lord's going to call you to something more. Adios. Jesus, thank you for your word tonight. I pray you would just equip us. Let this word equip us to be ready for a move of the manifestation of your Holy Spirit, God. Let us be ready to move when you say move. Let us be go. Let us go when you say go. Let us stop when you say stop. Let us yield when you say yield. Let us be patient. Let us be waiting for your word, God. Help us to live in the Spirit. Help us to live in your Holy Spirit, operating and functioning in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.